Like other railroads, the Tennessee classified its locomotives with a combination of letters and numbers, to which sometimes was added a name. Some of the earliest of these were American types, classified on the Pensy as the D-Class, a 440 wheel arrangement with four pony or leading wheels and four driving wheels. Some of these engines now are preserved at the museum at Strasburg, Pennsylvania. class then added a pair of trading wheels being a 442 wheel arrangement, the last pair of wheels supporting an enlarged firebox for more heat and thus more steam. These were called the Atlantic type. class was a 460, adding one more set of drivers to the Atlantic type, and these were called 10-wheelers. An H-class was a consolidation type found on many railroads, used mainly for freight hauling, and added one more set of drivers for more tractive effort, thus a 280. The locomotives getting the I classification added yet another set of drivers, becoming a 210. These were known as decapods, meaning 10 feet on the rail. They may have been slow, but they had a lot of pull. The Pensy came out with his J class in 1942. This was a heavy freight hauler with a 210 four wheel arrangement and a tractive force of over 95,000 pounds. But probably the most famous class of all Pennsylvania locomotives, rivaled only by the GG1 electrics, was the K class. The K4s, a 462 wheel arrangement known on all railroads as a Pacific, hauled the lion's share of the Pensy's latter day passenger trains during the steam era. It was a well proportioned, fast hauling machine.
As passenger trains got heavier and schedules tighter, the K-4s often had to be double-headed. It was in the late 1920s that the competing New York Central produced its famous Hudson locomotive, their J-Class. Pensy came up with a similar engine and enlarged K-4, which they classed a K-5. But the railroad never really got with the K-5. The L-Class was another freight hauler with a 2A2 wheel arrangement and known as a Mikado. That was because the first of this wheel arrangement was built in the United States for the Japanese government earlier in the century. While the Pensy's K4s and GG1s were probably the best known of the various locomotive classes, there was another locomotive that became legendary. The M1 Mountain Type. This was a locomotive whose time had come in 1923. Business was good and trains had to be moved over the mountains expeditiously. The K4s often had to be double-headed to get the passenger train over the mountains in any acceptable time, and a larger locomotive was needed. At this time, W.W. Atterbury was vice president in charge of operations. Atterbury was so involved in the in development of the new 4A2 locomotives, they were known as Atterbury's own. They had 72-inch drivers, which were larger than experts of the time thought were needed for freight and too small for passenger service. Now, all of that proved wrong, although the main use of the M1 class was to haul symbol freights and their use on passenger trains was limited. With the long-distance tender, which the railroad men called coast-to-coast -coast tenders, they stretched 108 feet in length, the tender fully loaded, weighing more than the locomotive. The M1s were seen all over the system, later production models being improved with more attractive force. However, after electrification, the M1s were used mostly west of Harrisburg. The M1 tenders had a small cab for the head brakeman an appendage which quickly acquired the moniker Doghouse. The M1s with their moaning whistles were built by both Lima and Baldwin Locomotive Works as well as in the Pennsylvania's own Juniata shops at Altoona. The Pensy's M1s were similar to mountain types on other lines which used them, although the New York Central, which prided itself on being the water level route, called its 4A2s Mohawks. Pensy's M1s ran well into the diesel age until 1953. One of Atterbury's engines was preserved at the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum at Strasburg, Pennsylvania.